H1N1 is a new strain of influenza virus. There's actually been a kind of H1N1 circulating for the last 30 years, but this spring, a new and different kind of H1N1 virus began to circulate in Mexico and is now spread worldwide. Some people call it the swine flu or swine origin influenza virus or novel 2009 influenza virus. There's lots of names for it. Most people just call it H1N1, understanding that we're talking about the new one and not the one that's been going around for 30 years. Is H1N1 a pandemic? It depends on your definition of pandemic. We expected a pandemic any time and have done planning for that for years, but we expected a different virus, different H numbers or N numbers. In terms of how widespread it is, it does meet the definition for a pandemic, and the World Health Organization has called it a pandemic for that reason. But in terms of causing illness, it's really no worse than regular flu virus. So in that sense, some experts still don't really think it's a pandemic. Um, it's sort of an academic question. We should, probably should call it a pandemic. New H1N1 virus, the symptoms are really pretty much the same as regular seasonal flu. Sort of sudden onset of symptoms, fever, cough, runny nose, sore throat, you can have muscle aches, headache. There are some patients who have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, along with the respiratory symptoms, and we don't see that very much with seasonal flu. They don't have just the GI symptoms, but they can have it along with the respiratory symptoms. And we are seeing some patients just, um, who don't have much fever. So we're counting a low-grade fever, 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 37.8 Celsius as fever, but we are seeing some patients who really don't have much fever with this flu, although that seems to be the minority. Right now, to really diagnose the new H1N1 requires specific tests that are not readily available. It turns out that the vast majority of influenza cases occurring right now are, in fact, the H1N1 virus, over 97%. So if someone has a positive flu test, that's almost certainly what they have. That having been said, the tests we have for flu, especially the rapid tests, are not very good for picking up the H1N1. So a negative test does not mean that you don't have the flu, but a positive flu test means you probably have the H1N1. We are working on other tests, such as cultures, which are very good, and PCR tests at some of the hospitals, which can detect the H1N1 reliably. The good thing is, is that the H1N1 flu that's circulating is sensitive to the drugs we have for influenza, Tamiflu and Relenza. So we can use those drugs for people who are hospitalized and, it, and also for people who are at high risk for complications. So people who are over 65, children five and younger, uh, young adults 19 and younger who are on chronic aspirin therapy because they're at risk for Rye syndrome. Pregnant women are at high risk for complications from the flu and should be treated if they have the flu. And then people with chronic medical conditions, heart disease, pulmonary disease, diabetes, chronic kidney disease. Um, not all chronic conditions, so high blood pressure doesn't put you at high risk, but the people at high risk who have the flu should be treated. People who don't have high risk conditions probably don't need to be treated and they can just get symptomatic therapy, plenty of rest, fluids, Tylenol, ibuprofen, that sort of thing. We shouldn't use aspirin because it can cause Rye syndrome, but just symptomatic treatment, staying at home is enough for the vast majority of people who have the flu.